How to control aircraft speeds. One of the main tools of air traffic control is speed control. Besides issuing clearances and instructions about taxi routes, headings, altitudes, and airways, speed instructions are a method we use to accomplish a lot of things. Before going for the actual speed control scenarios, we must first understand the basics. Let's start with the unit that we use. Although the official IKO recommendation for aircraft speed measurement is kilometers per hour, a knot is more commonly used worldwide. Also, Mach numbers are used when flying on high-level cruising altitudes, but the Mach number techniques we leave for later. But what is a knot? What does it stand for? The knot is an abbreviation from the marine world, and it stands for nautical miles per hour. If you are traveling at a speed of one knot, it would take you exactly one hour to reach a distance of one nautical mile, which is 1.852 kilometers or 1.151 statute miles. For aviation purposes, we need to scale the speed. The first key number you need to remember is 60 knots. This number we will apply in different scenarios to make the magic happen. If one knot means that you are traveling one nautical mile in an hour, then 60 knots means that you're traveling 60 nautical miles in an hour, 60 nautical miles in 60 minutes, or one nautical mile in one minute. Keep this in mind, you'll need it later. One of the main scenarios where we need speed control is to maintain distances between two or more aircraft. This is done by assigning the same speeds to all of the aircraft. For example, by instructing the pilots to fly at an indicated airspeed of 240 knots, the gap between the aircraft will stay constant if they are flying roughly at the same altitude. This is a common situation when controllers must make the traffic flow run smoothly like a train, making it more predictable and easier to manage. Another common situation is that we need the speed difference to gain a gap between the aircraft. Let me show you how. Two aircraft take off from an airport and they are both heading in the same direction. The tower controller gives the takeoff clearances to the aircraft so that there is at least a minimum radar separation of three nautical miles when the second aircraft is airborne. At the airspace boundary when the approach controller hands off the traffic to the en route controller, commonly a spacing of five to ten nautical miles is required. Okay, so something needs to be done to increase the gap from the three miles to, let's say, for example, seven miles in our example. We're four miles short. How do we gain that extra gap? With speed difference, of course. Now we need that magic number. One nautical mile, one minute, with a speed of 60 knots. So in other words, we need a speed difference of 60 knots between these two aircraft to gain a one nautical mile per minute. With some quick math and decision making, we will instruct the first aircraft to fly at a speed of 300 knots, and the second one, 240 knots. With these speeds assigned, the gap will start increasing at a rate of one mile per minute, and in four minutes, we will have our desired four miles of extra gap in between. A job well done. The speed difference can, of course, be scaled to fit the scenario. If you only need two extra miles in between, instead of assigning the speed difference of 60 knots and waiting for two minutes, you will gain the same by only 30 knots of speed difference and waiting for four minutes whatever suits the best in that particular traffic situation. But what if you calculate that you don't have enough time to wait for the speed difference to take effect? What if you notice that you would need so much difference that the aircraft can't fly so fast or so slow? Then you will need to combine the speed difference with some vectoring, but that is another topic, and you will need to slam that subscribe button to stay updated about that. Let's move on to the final scenario. This is the most important one. This is a must-know for all controllers, and you will need this skill when sequencing traffic inbound for the final approach. First, some fundamental rules about speed control for arriving traffic. Number one, ATC should allow traffic to fly at a clean configuration for as long as possible. However, to manage the traffic flow efficiently on downwind, base leg, and final, the controllers usually need to slow down the traffic to about 230, 210, or even 190 knots. Number two, Speed control cannot be applied after the aircraft reaches four miles from the threshold. At the latest here, the aircraft has to be given the possibility to reduce to landing reference speed and speed over threshold to be able to land safely. Number three, the speed adjustments given to an aircraft on intermediate and final approach should be minor, preferably at most 20 knots. Here's an example of a smooth speed reduction pattern on approach. The speeds could go from 250 knots to 230 on the star, or when being vectored to the downwind. 
In most situations, the traffic can still fly in a clean configuration at these speeds. On the downwind, the controller could start to reduce the speed from 230 knots to 210 knots and from 210 knots to 190 knots before turning into the base leg to keep the turn radius in control, avoiding overshooting the turns and to prepare for the final inbound turn to intercept the ILS localizer. And here we need to pay attention to the speeds and timings of the final turns closely. Let's say that there is already an aircraft ahead on the final, and we have given that one a speed instruction of 160 knots. We know that we must end this speed control by 4 miles, and then the aircraft will most likely start to slow down before reaching the touchdown. If we have the following aircraft on base leg, with a speed of 180 or 190 knots, we need to build a bit of extra buffer in the spacing, just to manage the speed reduction of the preceding aircraft. We need to keep in mind that when we turn the following aircraft to the final approach after establishing on the localizer and flying on the final approach course, this aircraft with a speed of 190 knots will catch up with the previous aircraft flying at 160 knots at a rate of 0.5 miles every minute. When we lock in the following aircraft also to the same speed, the gap will remain constant until the first one starts slowing down after they reach the 4 mile point from touchdown. It is up to the controller's expertise to be aware of the current wind conditions and the typical final speeds of these aircraft types, to build an appropriate gap with correct speed control and precise vectoring. Want to learn more? Join us for more ATC training videos. See you there!